How you guys doing? My name is uh, Maestro Che, aka Bald Ross, and I am an instructor here at Pratt Fine Arts Center in Seattle. I teach oils and acrylics and watercolor, and I've created this demo just for you. You enjoy. I just laid this uh, this yellow and red down here, and I'm gonna start right with the birch trees. I'm gonna lay down. I'm gonna put some yellow, a little bit of yellow, tiny bit of yellow, tiny bit of blue. And I'm using some of this golden paint here, which is uh, the gold standard for uh, acrylic painting. See what I did there? See what I did there? All right, so I'm just doing a little bit of time here. And again, people, this is acrylics. So uh, wear something that you have no problem getting paint all over. Um, but it, it doesn't, um, it's not like oils where it goes into your skin or, you know, the harsh chemicals. It's just water. Easier to clean up. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and use maybe a little bit of this alizarin crimson here. And I'm just setting up my these small little colors on my palette. All right, so what I'm going to do is figure out where I'm going to put these trees. And I, a lot of times I use my brush and go, okay, where can I put my trees at? I think I'm going to put it right here somewhere. Um, and so I'm going to grab a little bit of my white. I'm going to create this little flat area here grab a little bit of yellow grab a little bit of blue grab a little bit of my red or my lizard and crimson and kind of create a little marble then notice right here how it's a little um uh yes yeah, so yes uh well anyways let me let me finish what i'm saying here i'm reading the comments and trying to paint but anyways i create this little bead of, of paint that i'm able to uh to just and i just kind of roll on that side so to answer your question, Cheryl, yes, I <clears throat> I either uh, put it on a piece of canvas um, and, uh, you know, make an interesting kind of background, uh, you know, with it, um, or I just give it to my daughter and I let her kind of experiment and have fun with it. So notice here that I am just laying down, and you can't really see that, you know, you're going to see the brush tree a little bit, but I'm just kind of going up. To the top you know and I'm um, this is pretty this is pretty big right there right but I'm gonna I'm gonna cover it up but I'm just kind of laying down what you think what you're going for is this kind of like um, think of butter this buttery consistency and you're just kind of laying down these strokes you know try not to make it just completely straight make them um, make them a little bit kind of angled and moving around and kind of crooked because um, that's how nature is right um, and so the key is not to mix it as in I'm just kind of laying it down and I'm moving on um, later on I can add more but you don't want because again it's white and whatever color you're using and I'm using three different colors my primaries here and I'm just kind of just laying it down I'm gonna put another one here and you want that kind of marble look and you can add more as you go but just start off with just kind of keep it simple and I'm kind of going up here this one here and kind of I'm kind of going okay what, what else should I put in there maybe a couple more um, don't get too carried away at this point like like I was saying on my in my, my classes and to anybody is uh, you can always add more right so don't feel like you got to fill the whole thing up in the very beginning just put a couple of elements and then uh, you can build build up on it and since this is acrylic really you can just um, if you don't like it you can cover over it you know really there's really nothing stopping you from that so you are never really let me put another one here in a lot of ways you're it's uh, you can just keep working on it, working on it. You can cover it up, spray paint it. You can start over. You know, it's acrylic. It's you can just cover right over. A lot of times, I for my demos, since I teach so much in these mediums, I especially with acrylics or even oils, I <clears throat> spray paint. Um, spray paint a um, the old canvas, and I uh, start over, or I paint something else on it. So, but it's a. It's a rainy day here in the Pacific Northwest. Actually, it feels kind of good. It feels like it's washing away the coronavirus, which it's not, but, you know, we all can dream. Um, all right. So, all right. So I'm going to put a couple there. Let me, 
you know, I'm going to make a little bit of a kind of light purple. And I'm just, and you see here, just add a little bit of white, a little bit of this alizarin crimson, a little bit of blue. Just some nice little light purple. Green pink. And then birch trees. Green. And then, um, you can come look right here if you like. My daughter's joining us in the stream here. She's saying, say hi, mamas. Hi. So she's also a budding artist. All right, so just kind of putting this this here at an angle a little bit. Kind of like your other birch trees that you have in front of the house. Yeah, very similar. Okay, so let's see, put another one. I mean, I actually make this one thicker here. This one thicker. And if you, you know, this technique is kind of hard sometimes because uh, whenever I teach it, it's people are like, oh, it's so, it's, it's hard to get that consistency because we want to keep mixing with the palette knife. Keep, you know, you don't want to put, you just want to put a little bead of, of paint on there. So you just, it's just almost sliding off like butter. So I'm happy with that. So again, I have my brush trees and I'm dealing with a lot of paint here. And put that in my water so you always want to have your you know give it a bucket and then have your brushes in there um in the water so they just they're ready to go and then have like a rag or something right next to you so i have that i'm going to grab some blue and i'm going to start painting around i think <clears throat> the yellow right down here is dry so this is the fun part so right now i have a lot of warms in my in my um I have a lot of warms down. Now I'm gonna put some cool, I'm gonna put the sky. I'm gonna put the sky in the background. And I'm using phthalo blue. I love I love phthalos. I don't, I don't teach too many phthalos in my watercolor classes um, or even my oil classes, but for whatever reason, acrylics, um, I love phthalos in acrylics. So I'm gonna grab some, some white, mix a little bit here. Probably need some more white. All right, let's grab some more white That's here. That's a pretty blue. It is a pretty blue, it's just beautiful sky blue. Beautiful sky blue. All right, let's put some more white in here. <clears throat> You're gonna go through a lot of paint and that's okay, right? Especially white, that's why I buy this. Um, this is Selenier, uh, 500 milliliters. Um, just a giant tube of white. Um, Cause I, I'm gonna go through a lot. You mix it to lighten the values, make it more opaque. Have a little bit of this. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and go, okay, where do I want my sky? And this is where the negative painting comes in. You know, you tone it and then you kind of go, okay, where do I want my sky to be here? I'm gonna go ahead and... Okay, right here. I'm using my flat brush here to just... Um, Just kind of putting in here and there and everywhere. Negative painting, of course. So you're painting around your main subject and you're creating a sense. I'm painting the background. So I started with just a tone canvas. Now I'm painting in um, the background on these. I'm using a pretty large brush. You want to start with your large brush and work your way to your smaller brushes. You know, big brush, details, and then you work your way down to the to the other one here. And then I, you know, people ask me, you know, what what uh, medium do I like the best? Um, I'm traditionally, I mean, I was trained. My high school teacher was a watercolorist, and so I think she really. Um, instilled a love of watercolor um, but I think if she would have been shout out to Pam Olson um, uh, if she would have been an oil painter or acrylic painter I would have fell in love to whatever she was um, demoing in high school at the time so um, but I do like watercolor for the fact that it's hard <laughs> it's very difficult and so I love um, how difficult it is to paint in watercolor um, I tend to do things that are not easy. 
Um, like if someone tells me something, oh yeah, this is hard, and I say, okay, let's try it. You know, I try to challenge myself. I think that is uh, some of the things that I, I am very, I, I challenge myself, I try to challenge myself a lot. I try to stay, stay on my toes, stay frosty at all times. So I'm doing some negative painting. Again, putting the sky in between here. In between these trees and you're gonna see a little bit of that yellow coming through and that's okay you want a little bit of that yellow coming coming through because um, it kind of builds a sense of like light or um, movement textures All right. and if you follow me here you understand that I, how I talk a lot about textures and movement and, um, and those kind of things so Let's see, I'm dabbing. That's pretty dry, which is great. So, so you can see how I'm just kind of creating this, um, the sky in between the trees. And yeah, you could have started with a blue, you know, um, in the first, you know, there's actually, you can, you, there's really, <laughs> there's really no wrong way to start, start this sort of painting or just the acrylics really. In my humble opinion, there's no wrong way to paint in any medium. You know, you just gotta find your process and whatever works for you. I've watched a lot of demo artists, um, and so they, even though it's the same medium, they they all paint. We all paint differently. You know, you might know a watercolors that paints one way, oil painter that paints another way. You know, and that's what's so beautiful about these mediums is that. They are, you know, they are very, um, very versatile, right? They're very versatile. And so that's the beautiful part of being an artist and being a painter. And I hope that I convey the, the love of the, of the art form. If that is whatever painting I'm doing, you know, um, I have a lot of friends, uh, you know, Larry Cook is another one. And he's a fellow teacher at uh, the school that I teach at, and also at Pratt. You know, I learned a lot from just watching him, uh, watching artists paint, or he does encaustics is one thing that I want to start doing. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, all these different kinds of mediums that I get so much inspiration from my fellow art friends. Um, and, uh, you know... Collage, Cheryl's another one that is uh, collage, which is very inspiring. I love watching, watching, um, looking at her work. All right. <laughs> uh, I am, I am bald, Ru I am bald Russ. Yes, sir, I am. That's my alter ego slash me. Uh, no, I didn't do a lot of videos, and one of the things that uh, that I really wanted to do, uh, but you know, with kids and with work and all this kind of stuff, I didn't have the time. But now I kind of have time, uh, so I've been doing. It. Okay, so I'm laying. See, so you can see how I did the negative shape, and I'm painting around some of these um, um, Let's see. Oh, the encaustic pins. Yeah. Um, again, I've been actually thinking of getting one. The thing is, it's... Yeah, i got to give myself a little more time to do that. To do some encaustics. I do. I, I have been collecting um, a lot of uh, supplies and uh, a lot of the wax. But yeah, yeah, that'd be great. All right, so... All right, so I have my, I'm gonna go ahead and put my yellow down. I'm gonna grab my, I have a different brush because that one's pretty full of paint. Let's see. I have this one here this is my Filbert brush. Filbert, I love the Filbert brush. So the Filbert is, besides the name is, makes me laugh, Filbert. Um, it's uh, not like a flat where it's just straight. It has this curve, like this curve. So you can use it like a flat brush. 
and you can turn to the side to use the edge to create um, you know a round shape or a more organic shape so it's, to me it's very versatile and I think that's why I like it because you know I like versatility I don't like being I don't like being uh, one I don't want to be like one note artist which I think as an artist you're really not really one note I think that's the also misconception that I'm, that I'm throwing out to I, a lot of my friends, a lot of artists are just multifaceted, multiversatile in what they do. And it's, it's beautiful to see. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and go for this here. I'm going to put some yellow down here or some green using my phthalo. I think I'm going to have to bring down some more of this, um, my trees. So before I do the rest of this, I'm going to make sure that Put down more of this birch trees here and there and everywhere. Look at that. Look at this. Just, just lay it down and keep going. All right. Remember, the ones that are going to be thicker are going to be closer to us. The ones that are going to be a little thinner are going to be farther from us. So depending on the size, you know, figure out where they're going to be. Where they're going to be at. So, all right. So I have that. Your hands are going to get dirty. I love it. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and put the ground here. It's just going to. Oh, look at that! Look at that! Some yellow. Some. Some. Blue. I I don't I let I like the paint I like the colors to mix on my canvas instead of uh, I rarely mix this perfect color. It's just very like you see right there. It's just variety of different values. Um, so let's see. So stay tuned. Like today, I'm spotlighting Pr uh, Pratt Fine Art Seattle. So stay tuned. Uh, they are working on a some classes coming up, digital some uh, some classes online. So please stay tuned for that for people that are in the Seattle area or have taken classes at Pratt. They are working hard to uh, to get up and up and going for us and support these schools, right? Because they need us. They need us. You know, we are um, we're all you know with. Without art, I mean, a lot of people have been, you know, have been um, demoing art and, and doing art uh, online or just at home. And so, you know, take some classes, you know, um, or just reach out to other artists. I know that I do these uh, inf these free videos or these videos that I record for people just to, you know, just to watch and to uh, maybe they like haven't never painted before or always wanted to paint and you just never had the time. So now we have time. So um, that is the nice thing about this. So I, I put the grass in. So you notice I put, you know, started with that pinky color and then put the red down. And then now I put down the grasses here. Um, so now I'm going to go back to the top here. And it should be sort of dry. Dry. Let me grab another brush here. Be right back. Many brushes. All right, let's see. Step right. So I have. Um... Okay, so I'm going to. I got this little flat brush here, and I'm going to dab. So my yellow, some little lizard crimson, I'm dab here. Where's my red at? Where's my red at? Let me put some more red down really quick. Now I do paint quickly. One, for the fact that I teach a lot and uh, no one wants to watch me paint for hours on end. So what'd you guys do in class? Oh, we paint, we watched the bald man paint. It was nice, but we didn't get any work done. So, you know, this is just my way going quick. And also, um, 
I, 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 the more I paint, the more kind of loose I get. So now I'm going to use this stipple effect, right? And so I'm going to stipple over some of these trees and I've got some red and I got some yellow and I'm stippling. I'm going to zoom in here. I got this new mechanical arm that can zoom in. Hopefully you can see that. And so I'm going right over some of this. Hey, who needs who needs a director or a, a cameraman? I'm, I'm I am the cameraman. I'm just stippling some of these. Let me put a little bit of white in here. A little dab, a little white in here. I got some little itty, itty colors before they dry out. Covering up some of this tree, birch tree areas in here. So it looks like those, those, um, those leaves are covering part of the tree up. I'm going to put some darker limbs here in a little bit. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, I'm not sure why I picked blue. Why did I put blue? Anybody know why? No. No? Okay. Well, me either. So, just kind of doing this kind of stippling thing. And again, it's great to have, if you have an old paintbrush, like in your garage that you're not using, you know, if, um, and it's just all just matted and just, you know, you're, but you're, you're about to throw it away or whatever. Just, that's, these are those, the best brushes <clears throat> for painting, for acrylic painting, because it has just the hair just going bleh, everywhere. And so you're just kind of like, oh, I'm gonna, I love that for the fact that it just creates an interesting value and shape and and things that are just interesting right all right so I have a little bit of this stippling there and what I, and a little later I'm gonna do some some splatters you can see how that's going to add some textures in here so I think I'll do that now now that I got I'll, I start talking about it and got so excited about the splatters so and that's gonna again I don't want to feel like sitting here and painting all these these leaves so what I do a lot of times is is trying to because what happens is that you you naturally your mind starts to make tries to make sense of all this. So you have to force yourself not to make sense of it by splatters. It's just very random. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab my well, why am I grabbing green? I'm gonna let's focus, Lopez. Um, you got some more yellow and some and so I'm gonna splatter a little bit, right? And so again, this is why. A tiny bit of white, a little bit of water. This is why you want to uh, make sure you're wearing something you're not afraid to get paint on. Right? And so I'm going to splatter. Ow, that kind of hurts my delicate hand. All right. So you can use this. Okay, I need to get more paint on there. Okay, fine. That's fine. All right. Is that how you want to roll? Okay. Okay, a little bit of this. Okay, it doesn't want to splatter. Oh, there it goes. Maybe a little bit. Maybe a little bit more. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I might have to bust out my fluid acrylics. Probably be easier. I'm, I'm splattering on the other side of the paper, which is nice. So I'm just using a brush here just to splatter. Okay, fine. It's not... It doesn't want to do it. So I'm going to just put some white. Some... And splatter some more. You get just a little bit of splatters, but not as much as I would want. But I, I'll have to bust out my fluid acrylics here toward the end. So um, I'm gonna let that. That's okay for now. That part. I'm gonna work away. I'm gonna work my way um, toward the bottom here. Actually, I'm gonna put in the little leaves, a little um, darker. Um, A little darker branches and let's see what kind of interesting color I can I can grab here nice dark color this is a a black and I you know I, I rarely use black I usually I usually mix my own tone colors and that kind of stuff so um, I want to go ahead and grab and make these little limbs 
make this sound. Doop, 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 doop. I'm just using a thinner brush, a little bit of more water. And I make I like making these sounds. It's just it amuses me. And really what I'm here to doing this is because just to amuse myself. Are you not amused? All right, so look at this. Look at this beautiful birch trees. The trees of the birch or the aspens or whatever. I don't know. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I don't know if it matters. I don't. I'm just here to make art. I'll let you kids worry about the names of it. I'm named. I think I've painted a lot of these things. This is, you know, these these kind of trees are very fun to make because really, it, um, for one thing, they're they're beautiful, very colorful, a lot of texture, and uh, there's something about using the palette knife like uh, like butter, right? It's like putting butter on toast, and who doesn't like butter? If you don't like butter, please turn off the video right now. Bald Ross has spoken. All right, so a couple of these little tree limbs. Look at that. Who knows if that looks great, but you know what? I'm having a good time, and that's all that really matters to me. All right, so, oh, Milagros, can you grab that brush, please, on the ground? Just, just, just dropping, dropping, dropping brushes. It's part of the process. All right, so let's go ahead and get into... Another one of my, some of the grasses here. I'm gonna go pick up my smaller brush again. Grab a little bit of yellow. Put some little, okay, let me, okay my, a little more yellow. To create some textures down here, right over the, some of these uh, tree trunks. And I keep everything very loose, very textural. You know, I'm, you know, there are artists out there that love detail. I'm not that, I'm not one of those, but I just like just creating shapes and values and beautiful colors. To me, that's, that's what art is for me. But that's the beauty of art is that you can think whatever you want to you, while you're painting. It doesn't matter. There's no rules in art. It took me a long time to figure that out. And I went to art school. They didn't teach you that. They teach you, oh, you should look at this person. And yes, it's good to look at other artists. It's good to learn from them. But do not try to mimic them. Be yourself. That's the one thing that I think they don't teach enough at is to be yourself. Um... Don't try to be somebody you're not. If you like porches, paint porches. If you like dogs, paint dogs. If you like cats, paint cats. Whatever. Paint whatever. No, no one cares. Alright, so I'll just put some textures. Some grasses. Hey, Larry. How you doing, buddy? Again... I'm showcasing... Uh, Pratt, another school I teach at Seattle. Just a shout out to Pratt. Be showcasing different schools, the three schools I teach at this week. All right, so I got some <laughs> textures there. Let me put a little bit, clean this brush a little bit here. Do some negative painting over here. Oh, hey, oh, hey, oh, hey, oh, hey, oh, hey, oh, hey, oh. Hey, oh. I talk to myself a lot, and if you don't, um, I do. Because right. I don't care. Jimmy crack corn, and I don't care. All right, so, I'm, you know, at this point, I'm just kind of filling in, letting this dry a little bit more, and so I'm kind of fiddly faddling, fiddly fliggling. Is that the, that's the actual technical term? Art school term? Fliggly flaggling? I'm fliggling flaggling it. You can use that, by the way. You can use uh, the fliggly and flaggly if you like. All right, so just letting some of this kind of 
light blue kind of shine through in between the grasses of sorts. So again, creating texture and movement and all this kind of stuff. And this kind of stuff comes with experience. So the more you paint, the more detail, information you put in your painting. So in the very beginning, it's just going to be, you know, simple shapes, simple colors. But eventually, the more you paint, the more you start going, okay, I remember doing this. I'm gonna, you know, so in your mind, also try to remember the things that you liked about your painting. I always tell this to my students. I said, in the very beginning, you look at your painting and go, okay, try to remember. I like, you know, try to pick one or two things you love about your painting. Kind of go, okay, and it can be as simple as, oh, it's just a color or a shape or something, right? I like the way this looks, right? And then the next time you paint, pick another one or two things you like about your painting, right? And then eventually you paint enough, you get to the point where there's two or three things you don't like about your painting. And that's how you know that you're progressing as an artist, right? See how, see what I did right there? Yeah, huh? huh? Yeah. So... So there, take that. Luckily for you guys, I talk a lot anyway, so. All right, so I have, you know, just letting some of these things dry. So, all right, so I have that. So I'm gonna put a couple, a couple of these. Let me drag some of these um, paints I have underneath my table. I have. My studio's full of stuff and my table's full of underneath I'm storing stuff. All right. I have some fluid acrylics. And so they're acrylic paint that are fluid. <laughs> uh, and so they're very, very pigmented. And so this is where I do my splatters. Oh, look at that. Look at that. It just does it for you. Look at the big, thick paint. Just everywhere. I'm just creating more textures. Look at that. Yep. That really happened. Yeah, see that? Yeah. Because why? It don't matter. It's your world. I'm going to move up my camera here. It's your world. It doesn't matter. Be you. Be you. All right. Listen, we're also, yes, I sound like I'm very confident when I do this stuff, but I'm literally a screaming little kid underneath. But, uh, we, you know, no matter how long you've been painting, we're as insecure as all of you. So, we just try not to show it we try to fight through that insecurity because we know the process we know how it's going to work it's a little like a hot mess in the beginning and then and then that's when it's just going to look beautiful right so look at this yellow right here put that in there i'm not sure why i'm doing that <laughs> i probably should have wiped that out but let's see if i can wipe that out i can see that just wipe it out once it's dry see that <clears throat> And it doesn't matter. Okay, so I have some of that. Now I got some red, some cad red. Ladies and gentlemen, some cad red. I know, I know. I'm calling out. I'm calling out my shots. Like it's like it's like um, it's like baseball when you're pointing at the outfield and where you're gonna hit the ball. That's really not probably what it is, but let me just pretend like it is, right? I'm just putting some texture. Just bleh, I'm just like ketchup and mustard, right? It's like putting it. Catch him. Look at that. Just creating texture. Look at that. Oh. I ain't gonna lie, people. I love being an artist. I love being an artist. All right. So. And I love watching other artists. I, that's, that's fun. I've learned so much from my students and how they... You know, maybe a combination of paint or a shape that I would never thought of and um, or was maybe just a little too afraid to do. And sometimes when students just start trying out things, they they don't have that insecurities that other artists, uh, established artists have. And so I'm like, oh, I never would have thought of that. I was too afraid to start do that or whatever. And 
I see it and I'm like, oh, that's beautiful. I'm gonna remember that. It turned out great. All right, so just creating some textures down there, right? That's really what you're trying to do. Let me zoom up here a little bit more for the, I have this new, this little hand that I can move up and down um, that I ordered versus just the tripod that I had, um, the tripod that I kind of Frankenstein together. Um, so I was happy with this new, it's like a little arm. It's like the, one of those little lights, like the, the Pixar lights. Boop, 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 boop. Um, this kind of can moves around the elbows and such and stuff and such and stuff and stuff. So I'm going to see if I have some white. Do I have some white? Nope, that's not white. There we go. Here's some white. I'm going to put some white in here and just splatter a little bit of white. Let's see if I have any left. Oh, there's a little bit left. Just to textures, right? Textures. Textures, my pretties. All right, so. Yeah. All right, let's, uh, I'm going to grab a little bit of this. You can probably hear my son in the background. He's making his way up here. Put some grasses, some more yellow grasses. Uh, that's him. Okay. Um, see, this is my life. We're like, like everybody's life right now. We have our kids everywhere. Everywhere around us. All right, so look at that. That painting right there. Let me stand back a little bit. Do I like it? Yes, because it's fun. The process was fun. Right? Um, let me dab a little bit. Dabby dab a little bit. I'm going to put some shadow. Some chateau. Some shadow on a couple of these trees. Um, grab a little bit of this blue, a little bit of this, where's my white at? A little bit more white, a little bit of my lizard and crimson, just a darker tone. Uh, uh, ooh, ooh. A little bit of this, where did I? I'll put it right there. Oh, hey, oh, oh. Just dropping paint everywhere. I'm just making a little bit of a mess. Yeah, definitely when you're doing acrylics, definitely make sure that you have a dedicated space because it can get, this is my desktop here. I moved all my stuff to my desktop so I can when I'm doing my classes online, I can use my iPhone to record or to people can see my painting surface. And then I have my computer here to look at whatever, you know, face to face with the people, with, with my students. All right. So I think we're getting pretty close to finish with this bad boy. Because I think it's better to be 90% unfinished and 120% overworked. So I, I, I think that's a great way to see, explain, not to get too fussy with it, which we all do. So I'm mixing using my palette knife, and I love this little my um, plastic palette knife for my acrylic painting for the fact that it's plastic and also it has a little elbow here, boop boop boop, and so therefore your knuckles aren't um, dragging on the painting. And I love this uh, triangle, rectangle, triangle shape. It's a triangle. Uh, I'm going to put a little bit of chateau right here. Right here, right, th right there. I, you know what? I didn't really establish, um, you know, where light is coming from, but it doesn't matter. If you learn anything from me today, it don't matter. As long as you have fun with the process. That's the key. It's the key to life, really. All right, so just put a little chateau or shadow or chateau. I don't know. It doesn't matter. 
And yes, I am this. If you just tuning in or just found me or whatever, I am this strange in real life. Or entertaining in real life. I don't know. People say I should be a comedian. No, I, I'm. I think I, when I'm painting, I'm sort of listening to myself, but sort of not. And so um, a lot of times, uh, you know, I'm just lucky. I don't, I'm not swearing. Really, <laughs> you should be very blessed. I'm just not swearing here. No. Um, I don't know, I just let, that's like subconsciously just kind of letting out, just, uh, how would you explain it? I don't know, uh, just being me. Yes, Larry, I, I read that somewhere and uh, a few years ago and I've been using that because I've been trying to explain it and I think that was probably the best way to explain it. The 90, the 90% percent Unfinished versus 120% overworked. All right, so look at that. All right, so create textures. The key is textures. What is the word for today, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls? Textures, right? I created some textures. Some little splatters up here. There's a splatter right here. Some grasses. But that is it in all its glory, right? In all its glory. Um, again, I would like to shout out to Pratt Fine Arts in Seattle. Uh, they have a variety of different classes. Um, everything from woodworking to printmaking to uh, blacksmithing, which I talked about earlier. I love blacksmithing. Uh, wood sculpture, sculpting, uh, welding, uh, 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 jewelry making. There's, I'm, I was surprised how much stuff they do at Pratt. It's amazing. It's like a little gem in Seattle. So please give them a call. Check out their website and tell them Bald Ross sent you. And go take a tour once again, once it opens up. <laughs> go take a tour once it opens up. It's a beautiful space. All right. So that is it for today, boys.